So in the last video I talked about 3D printing TPU gaskets and this video is kind of a follow-up to that because I had a couple questions and I also I made a sort of a misstatement in there about temperature. So if you haven't seen that other video I'll put a link down in the description. It, this video may make more sense if you see that one first. But let's take a look at a couple experiments with fuel and fire. So by far the biggest question people had in the comments and in the forum comments was the longevity of this stuff when soaked in fuel. In the other video I did um, about an hour, maybe two hours of it soaking in fuel and I took it out and just felt it saw it to see what it was like but I didn't uh, approach it more scientifically let's say. So this time what I've done is I've soaked this TPU gasket in two-stroke fuel, oil and fuel, for two days. This was covered and you can see there's still a little bit left in there but some of it has evaporated off. And what I want to do is I want to see if the gasket has gotten any thicker or if the gasket has gotten any wider. And before I did this test I took some measurements and uh, we're going to take a look at this gasket and see if it has changed at all. In other words, did the gas soak into the gasket or did it stay the same? Now, first impressions are it does curl up a little bit. And I noticed that with the other one that I had done, it also curls up a little bit. Now, when it's kept in compression, that's not an issue. But um, it is something to note. I'm not sure exactly why that's happening, but uh, maybe maybe there is a little bit of contraction on one side or another depending on which side it was in the fuel. So I took the measurement in this corner because there is a little bit of variation around the gasket when you 3D print stuff. It's slight but there is a little bit and let's see what I got here. I got uh, 0.96 millimeters or 0 0.385 of an inch thick. Now I printed this at one millimeter so that's that's pretty common with with 3D printers. You know you're you, 40 microns is, is not uncommon for the, it to be out. I measured a couple other places and actually it was a little bit larger than one millimeter. So we're, you know, we're sort of in the 40 micron range. And take our measurement right in this corner, same place I did before. And we're getting 0.99. So yeah, we're getting 0.99, 0.98 somewhere in that range so it is possible that it did swell just a little bit perhaps uh, 20 microns I would say that's probably less than a paper gasket is, t is going to tend to swell in the same situation of being submerged in gasoline so let's measure the width now okay so checking the width is a little bit more difficult because that's like I say it is kind of folded a little bit but 79.95 now 79.95 is quite a bit different than what we got before. So essentially we're getting almost 7 tenths of a millimeter. We did have a little bit of, of swelling. Now how much swelling compared to paper? Well that's, you know, I, I imagine that paper would swell up at least that much. Now as far as can I squeeze anything out? Has it changed properties? No. No, not at all. The only difference is it has curled up a little bit and maybe that is maybe the curling is a function of it expanding a little bit. Now the other thing I had was was I said in the video something like uh, you didn't have to worry about this stuff up to about 200 degrees C and that was completely wrong. Uh, you print this stuff at approximately 200 degrees C so that means that it is flowing at that rate. So what we would be concerned about is the glass transition temperature of this stuff, which is where it basically starts to turn from a solid form into a liquid form. It's not either one, it's kind of in between. It's basically just starting to deform at that point. So we're going to do a little quick and dirty test here. What I've got here is a aluminum block, a temperature probe, reading on the multimeter down here, and I've got not one of the ones that I soaked in gasoline gasket and uh, we're going to, this is just a fresh off the printer gasket I want to set it on there and heat this block up from underneath with the map torch 
we'll try to determine exactly when this thing starts to lose its its uh, solidness. Let's make sure that's making contact there and make sure it's out of the way and you can see it that is 17 degrees Celsius by the way I'll I'll convert that here in a minute and uh, let's give this a shot let's reroute my cord a little bit there before I burn through it Okay, as with everything, this has turned out to be more complicated than I thought. Something happened in my first temperature probe. I think it was when I set it on fire. So let's try this again with my good temperature probe, which is rated up to, uh, I don't know, it's like 2,000 degrees. I've used it uh, uh, measuring the inside of my makeshift forging oven, so it should be okay. So we still have a little bit of heat in the aluminum block, so we are now at 34 degrees Celsius. And uh, let's try heating that up again. You can see how that heat is moving through that aluminum. So 100 degrees Celsius is 200 degrees, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot, extremely hot, but it hasn't started to melt yet. I'm not seeing any indication that it's sticking or starting to melt. Let's go a little hotter. We never actually got to 100 degrees, so let's go a little hotter. That should get us well over 100 degrees. Okay, definitely a lot. I can actually indent the piece and leave a mark. Although it does kind of self-heal still. But definitely stickier. Yeah, definitely stickier. More like uh, Oh, what are those things that you throw at a wall and they stick? That's what it's kind of like now. Especially this side out here. It's not broken apart yet, but it's definitely lost a significant amount. Of... It's definitely become more pliable. So definitely I would say 100 degrees C is, is getting right to, right to that point. We're at 114 right now. 111, it's starting to come down a little bit. Alright, so we definitely start to get sticky at about around 100 degrees. It starts at 100 degrees. Actually, it's right there in that corner. It's actually kind of melted a little bit. Just a little much more pliable than it was not quite as stiff let's, uh... so it's telling me it's at 259 degrees and I would say you wouldn't want to use it at 259 degrees but it is not melting at 259 degrees Fahrenheit it's still staying together but it is definitely more more pliable of course you know this is just a test uh, I just wanted to see you know approximately where we were at what happens to this stuff as it gets hot you know for a specific application you know you'd want to do a more scientifically rigid test see what this stuff's going to do let's, let's see about ripping it now it's really hot but Yeah, see, it's it'll it'll sort of lose shape at around there. It's definitely lost shape now. Whereas before, it would come right back and basically self-heal. 
it's definitely stretching out much much more pliable than it was before uh, much more easy to deform so let me recap just to close this out a little bit so fuel uh, if it's soaking in fuel it will expand a little bit more so uh, width wise than thickness as far as temperature I think uh, anything under anything under 100 degrees C and it's going to be safe which is you know 212 degrees Fahrenheit but uh, definitely anything above that and you're taking the risk of it doing this sort of number which is just you know that's not going to work it's not something I spent a lot of time obviously setting up so just to, just to get a general idea of what you're dealing with when you're dealing with this stuff and um, as I said we're going to keep it on a tractor for this season and uh, we'll take it off at the end of the season and see if it looks like this or if it still looks like a usable gasket thanks for watching